Hey, what's up, everyone? How you guys doing, man? It's the Rental Extreme. I'm giving you my reviews of Survivor Series. So, um, please uh, subscribe to me up there. Leave your comments below, and I'll be glad. So, the night started off with um, Daniel Bryan and DiBiase. I didn't start catching the match until halfway when DiBiase, Daniel Bryan, gets the full upper hand of the match. And I think the the upper hand of the match was very good. It, it was very, it, it played very well for DiBiase to get a full upper hand in the match, but I think it would have been better for Daniel Bryan to get a full upper hand in the match. I personally thought that would make more sense, but I think the match played fairly well. So um, with DiBiase, you know, trying to you know pull off a good upper hand, Daniel Bryan pulled off some good counters and um, other attempts, so it played very well because Daniel Bryan can work with any superstar. But because this is the first time DiBiase and Daniel Bryan, you know. Started working at it in the match. I think it's gonna. It's not gonna. St it's gonna. It's not gonna start like immediately very a big deal. It's gonna. St they're gonna start fresh. So for Daniel Bryan to start off on a fresh feed, I think it played very well. So Daniel Bryan did pull off very well some unique counters with the Dream Street. That's what really got me. Well, DiBiase nailed the Dream Street for victory. But this match played fairly well. I think it, it, the momentum was fairly well. Um, personally, um, for um, Daniel Bryan to execute the bell lock, I think. It wasn't much of a downhill. He could have counted the Dream Streak into the Bell Lock. I think it would make it more interesting, apparently. So that's where it played fairly well. But this this match was very good pace, less one sided, more, you know, a lot of momentum, a lot more predictability. I think it played fairly well. So I'm sorry to say that again. But I rate this uh, 8 stars out of 10. I have to say 8 stars out of 10. Um, four, three, like four, 3.5 stars out of five so um next match we had a uh, caval and dolph ziggler with vicky uh, as dolph ziggler's uh, manager slash girlfriend whatever um the match played fairly well too i mean the match did look a little too rushed i heard on twitter but i think the match played very well it, i think it was very quick it looked fairly paced and caval getting a good upper hand and then dolph ziggler put off his old upper hand and the match played very well so with caval and daniel bryan the newest recruits out there the, the match played with a fairly pace. So I like how that match went. It had some good flow. It got me into it. Will Caval get the win or will Dolph Ziggler get the win? They were, they pull off some good upset pins right there. And I think uh, that's where they played it well. So Caval, you know, getting a good momentum. If Caval wins, I think this will build off momentum. Just like with London and Kendrick pull off his wins to sweep Eminem like, out of the picture. So... I didn't think that was going to happen with Dolphs, but apparently this match played fairly well. I was very glad with um, Caval, you know, getting a big opportunity to get into this buildup that he's getting. But for Dolphs to get the win, I think it was a good upset pin. I think it was um, a little more interesting. I was very into that upset pin, but I like how, they, how it ended more differently. So I rate this start match a 7.5 stars out of 10. Match ended fairly. The well. match did end fairly well. It was very even pace. Actually, eight stars out of ten. Eight stars out of ten. Same rating as DBRC Danny Bryan. So I like how the pace went. The pace went fairly well. So uh, moving on to the next match. The ma next match was uh, Morrison and Sheamus. I know this match wasn't a big of a deal, but it's just for story purposes or to fill in the card spots. And um, I personally think that match was that match was fairly well. Um, John Morrison, you know, pull off a good upper hand. Sheamus pull off a great upper hand in the match. The match did look a little slow, look a little overly one-sided. But John Morrison did was able to pick it up and make it more of an even match. And I like how that match went. The match went very even, went and fairly even. And John Morrison pull off a good upper hand. I think it was great. I was hoping he pull off his Starship Pain after, you know, he kicks Sheamus. But luckily enough, that didn't happen. But, you know, I know this match served no purpose, kind of, just kind of for story purposes for what's going to happen on Raw. But that match went fairly well. I was glad how that match um, went. The match had good flow, but um, the end was really dropped the ball. For him to nail two kicks and then for him to get the three there, I think that looked a little weird. We wouldn't expect we would expect Sheamus to kick out of that. So, I think he would have should have nailed the Starship paint to bring more better momentum this one. So, I rate this match a 6.5 out of 10. The match was very good, but I think... Um, they kind of dropped the ball on the top of that. It wasn't really a big deal. It's just for story purposes for their few to build up. Hopefully it does in the future, but it, it it was a good match. So I have to say it was a good match. Good even flow with John Morrison, you know, with his French training. Actual French training. I think it did pull off some momentum right there. So the match did pull off some, um, some good um, high-flying with powerhouse moves and 
the chemistry, Sheamus and Morrison did work off some good chemistry. So they had three good matches there. Very good build up, how they ordered the car. It looked a little weird. They expected the Divas match to be the second or third, but it was after the Morrison Sheamus. The Divas match, Natalia against Lay Cool. This match was very, very different. Like, Lay Cool gets even a huge upper hand in the match. Look a little overly one sided, but the barricade was um, very great. I was hoping. Um, the Natalia would pull a win off a ten count, and then uh, Lay Cool defends the titles, but that wasn't the case. Uh, or Natalia loses by count out, but that wasn't the case either. Uh, Lay Cool gets thrown over the barricade as Michelle throws him to the barricade. Michelle and Natalia had better chemistry, as Layla wasn't really doing anything besides doing her stupid spin kicks. It looked like she had the martial arts background a little bit, because she, she could like really execute very well. She can execute those martial art kicks very well, and I think that's what that's what really the only interesting thing about her in her finishing move, but we haven't seen that in a while. But for Michelle McCool, Michelle McCool did um use a lot of outring environments, so that bring a lot of huge difference to the match. So I kinda credit them for making a huge impact for like how they did. That match was played fairly well. But eventually at the end, Natalia, you know, throws off Layla when Michelle misses her kick. And then eventually nails in the sharpshooter. We would expect Michelle to tap out like she did. But it was uh, pretty surprising for that to happen. But that match was um, very good, very interesting. And um, Beth Phoenix, after that, Layla and Michelle tries to uh, attack Natalia. And Beth Phoenix comes in and interferes in the match. And then uh, she tries to um, fend off the attack of Lay Cool. And then Beth Phoenix gets the return. The return was very good. That's what the biggest momentum of the match was. I was very excited for Beth Phoenix to be back. But if Lay Cool retained the title, the Beth Phoenix challenged them to the title. It would be interesting, but luckily, crazy enough, that didn't happen. So hopefully Natalia and Beth are co-champions uh, as of now. But that may bring off a lot of spice. So now the Diva Division is back alive again. That's a very huge relief for the people who hate Lay Cool or Natalia fans. So... Next match was a traditional Survivor Series match. Uh, for MVP to get eliminated in the first, I wouldn't really expect that. I would expect him to eliminate a first, uh, eliminate someone, and then he gets eliminated a little bit sooner than later after he eliminates someone. So, for MVP to be back in hometown, I think that was a huge deal. It was very great for him to get all this momentum, but... Um, it was it looked very good. So uh, eliminate MVP was eliminated first, and I think the next person eliminated was uh, Chris Masters to Jack Swagger's angle lock or armbar by Alberto Del Rio. The match looked fairly paced, and the match kind of really built up some suspense because it's three off five. Uh, Big Show comes in, he hilariously knocks out Del Rio after Del Rio taunts. He was knocked out cold, so he's moved out of the match, and then um, eventually soon we get. Um, we're down, and then eventually with Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes was very comedic in that match with the dashing face. That was hilarious. It was very great for him to do something like that. It was just very hilarious. I kind of liked that one, but I was heating up some pizza, so I didn't really see much of it to happen. So, there you go. And for Cody Rhodes, I think, I forgot who he got eliminated, but I think Big Show or Kofi Kingston. I did miss his elimination. And then Swagger eventually eliminates Kofi Kingston. It was down to show. And Rey Mysterio gets McIntyre and, uh, let's see, um, Jack Swagger. But I think, uh, McIntyre, I think for Jack Swagger, Jack Swagger, um, did look good in the match. Um, for him to try to ankle lock the Big Show, that wasn't the case. And then eventually, Rey Mysterio does his body slam pit off the of Big Show. That got them the victory. So, moving on after that, we got McIntyre. He took his sweet time. I think that's where they got slow pace. I think McIntyre should have did it more immediately. Try to do the future shock. And I was hoping he eliminates Big Show, then be McIntyre and Rey Mysterio. That was the case. But the match did pull off a fairly pace. It was very interesting. I mean, I was so into that match. I was hoping that... McIntyre will pull off a huge comeback, but that wasn't the case. It looked too predictable that the Rey Mysterio Big Show would be sole survivors. I mean, I thought of oh, the Real's team may pull the win, so they didn't really serve a purpose very much. But I rate that match at 8 stars out of 10. The match did was very good, or 7 stars out of 10. I mean, the match was very entertaining, but the whole pace of it wasn't that great. I mean, I wasn't that into it, but... I mean, I was into it, but... The whole ending of it looked a little too obvious that Rey Mysterio's team was going to pull the win. I was expecting a little more unpredictability. But the beginning was very good pace. It looked more suspense. But at the end, it looked too obvious that they were just going to survive that one. So, 
Seven stars out of ten. Um, Vladimir Kozlov, Santino versus the Nexus. Uh, the Nexus did pull off a good upper hand in the match, and then Santino makes his huge momentum his comeback, but the end was a little goofy when the Nexus just stood up there and taught, and then Santino just comes and tries to chase him off. That looked a little silly, and then Heath Slater pulls off his finishing move. I was hoping Heath Slater counters the Cobra, and then pull off his finishing move to pull off the victory. So, personally, um... That match did um, didn't really play fair well to me. I like the momentum of the match. The momentum looked fairly well, but um, the end will look a little goofy. So I rate this match a seven point five stars out of ten. Um, but it, it did it did drop the ball there. But it was just a jobbing match for Santino and Kozlov and Nexus. It looked obvious that Nexus was gonna win. I mean, no one really cared about that match, but uh, I like the momentum of the match. It played very well. The match, Edge and Kane, Edge versus Kane. After Edge um, shows up with the empty wheelchair with no Paul Bearer, where was Paul Bearer be? I mean, Paul Bearer's been powerless without his urn, and I think it looked very weird. I thought he would have some side of power that Edge could overcome it and make him more better. But look, obviously, anybody can kidnap Paul Bearer, but hopefully only Edge does something like this. I think it will make it more interesting. So, with Kane pulling off a good upper hand, saying, where's Paul? And then Edge winds up turning the match around. The match played fairly well. I like how the match played with even more even pace. And um, it looked more like a lot of momentum for Kane to nail his clothesline off the turnbuckle. It played fairly well, and the edge does a drop kick. Uh, the match did play fairly paced, despite Kane coming out of his prime. Um, Kane did carry out the match very well. Edge did carry out the match very well. I was glad they they pulled off some excellent chemistry like this. So uh, it, it played very well for me personally, and I really did it. Uh, was into that match. I was hoping Kane choke slams and just pull a straight up win, but that wasn't the case. Edge nails the spear. I thought Edge would pull the win, but Kane does that weird. Does put the shoulders on Edge, and it looked a little goofy. The end was a little goofy, and then Edge winds up getting frustrated after this tie. And um, Edge just winds up attacking K and throws him through a barricade. So Edge is the monster, you have to say. But um, Edge, um, you know, did pull off some good momentum in this match. I'm thinking Edge is going to win the rematch at TLC. We all know that. Uh, that could happen. But it can't get some rain. He could continue his power. So I rate this match a 7.7 7 and 7 quarter stars out of 10. Good pace match, but the end was a little goofy, I have to say. So... The main event match. The main event match. Expects two two parts out of this review because this may be long. Because I know this this is where they start spazzing out in this match. Um, a lot of people spaz out about the results, and um, the results was a little disappointing. But I think they're gonna try and rework this storyline where Cena gets fired. But we all know that whole shebang where um, Cena is gonna. Cena is just going to probably um, work his way around this stipulation. So I think the stipulation is just going to serve no purpose. Barrett's just going to try and get his revenge on Cena. Like, that's what the whole stipulation was. Three are fired, and, uh, went, and the match looked too one-sided, too. It looked too one-sided. Like, Wade Barrett getting most of the upper hand in the match, it looked a little goofy. Vrenior did get his uh, perform off a few of his moves, but the match still looked a little goofy. Like, Wade Barrett getting upper hand, and John Cena just won two, and then he does his job. Like, it looked a little goofy. I mean, everybody was really expecting different, high, has high prospects of this match. Everybody's expecting a different predictability of this match. So, personally, I think, I thought Sean Cena was going to help Bear win. Because, reveals that for sure. He flips the script and he becomes leader of the Nexus. And then he orders Bear to around because he did his favor. So now he's trying to scratch his bag. I was thinking that could happen. I didn't think Cena was going to turn heel, but I think he was going to start toying with Nexus. So... I would think that for one fact, but despite Randy Orton winning, I'm thinking that's what made do the same. I think he's just going to work around the stipulation. So the stipulation is going to serve no purpose, really. But if the only way the stipulation would serve purpose if he actually gets fired. I know um, tons of people are spazzing out to this to this uh, match, personally. But I think um, for this dramatic end to happen, I think it kind of served no purpose, too. But the... The, the storyline did serve very well that he's going to get fired. Randy Orton celebrates, but John Cena hugs uh, Randy Orton, hands him the title, then hugs Michael Cole, because Michael Cole does have respect for John Cena, and for him to walk out the crowd in the farewell. Um, I'm thinking that's going to, that kind of played fairly well, um, but it was kind of ridiculous, but Monday Night Raw, hopefully Monday Night Raw surprised me, because I know tons of people were pissed off, so the, tons of people were kind of like into that storyline. But there were kind of mixed emotions there. But I think um, 
This match, I rate this, to be very honest, has to be like a 7, seven stars out of 10. 7 stars out of 10, I mean, it looked too one-sided. People were into the match, but it kind of looked too one-sided, and I think it kind of served no purpose. So, to be very honest, I think it was um, a useless storyline, but expect the next part about this. I'm going to continue talking about this.